The immune system is the armed forces in your body. We have an army, an air force, a marines, a coast guard, a navy, a reserves. Sometimes the army gets called out. Sometimes the army doesn't respond and it's the navy that gets called out. IgG, IgA, IgM, IgD. Some are more common than the others, but you can miss it with one. If you only check one, you can miss it. If it comes back negative, what you can say is, okay, the army's not working today. The, the army's at rest, probably okay, but let's check the Navy. So you want a test that's gonna be a little more comprehensive. Recent literature showed that blood tests, not only endomycial, but also transglutaminase, seems to be ineffective in detecting most of the patients, most of the patients affected by subclinical silent celiac disease, the ones below the waterline. The blood tests are not accurate. How not accurate are they? One study evaluating endomycial antibodies showed the sensitivity of the marker was 100% in patients with total villus atrophy, but the value plummeted to 31% in patients with celiac disease and partial villus atrophy. 31%, wrong seven out of 10 times. That's why your blood tests come back negative, and yet when the patient goes on a gluten-free diet, they feel better. Addition of gliadin antibodies to the analysis would have increased the detection rate in the study because many doctors have written that you just have to check endomycium. It's 100% accurate and sensitive. Well, yeah, if they have total villus atrophy, it is. But they don't, you know, they just look for the ones, they do the histology, they see they've got total villus atrophy. Yep, that's a celiac. And then they look at the blood test and they come back positive. Yep, the blood test tells us that's a celiac. They think that's a celiac. That's just an end-stage celiac. 